最後は大関照ノ富士 It has to be this time. Looking back now, I see this as the collective stance Sumo took towards Tedonofuji's Yokozuna bid in July 2021. For Sumo, it was about writing injustice to ensure that a fighter wholly deserving of Yokozuna actually made Yokozuna. The belief was he would have done so in early 2016 had he not been gut punched by injury. The feeling was he deserved to be so now, after ruling Division 1 for 12 months and winning straight titles in March and May. Denied the white belt only on the technicality that he was not ranked at Ozeki for both. Just four months off 30, and with ticking time bombs for knees, Teru would be hard pressed to win straight titles in future were July to end in failure and devastation. Thus, in the draining heat of Nagoya, had the wrong to be righted. Sumo would do all that was reasonable to ensure this brave, strong man finally got his dues. It had to be this time. As with all great promotion stories, luck played a little role. The suspension of Asano Yama would spare Teru a long, hard grapple in sweltering conditions against a man desperate to defeat him. While the day three withdrawal of Takakesho removed another constant problem. And first opponent Endo was in no state to repeat his dazzling feat of May, leading to this tame display. The left thigh unable to bear much pressure and soon ending his tournament. Day two, though, would be a much sterner test. Wakataka Kage, who had won their first match last year, attacked him with all the confidence successive technique prizes bring. Testing Teru's reactions to sideways darts, his belt grip breakage skills, and forearm defense. Only true Yokozuna quality saw Teru through as the clamp broke the right grip, then reeled his foe in for the key outside left, his skill literally sparkling in the camera flashes. Day three saw Takano Sho attempt to copy Wakataka Kage's starting parry, only to be caught and dragged into much the same grueling kind of grapple. Takano Sho did well to escape once and try, with the head as his shield, to fashion a diagonal push from the right, much as he would deal with Takayasu. But Teru kept that right disengaged, and when sensing the moment, deftly brought his left across to complete the double handed twist down. Day four perhaps should have gone better given Dai Eisho's poor form, but after almost getting hands lost in Teru's chest, the Saitama man scrapped for turf and persisted in pushing up, forcing a pull which almost gave him the bout. Only wonderful knee defense spared Teru's blushes here. Just as determined to tip Teru sideways from below was battering ram Hokuto Fuji. Who really needed the left to buttress his driving right on day five? Teru, well aware of that, simply hooked from underneath, barged Hokuto backwards, then threw him forwards. After such a perfect start, it had to be this time. Out of sheer respect for his obvious talents, his middle third foes resolved not to try anything cheap, like this. Which would cruelly thwart him. Ichinojo, his old school friend, began a series of more obliging tachi eyes. Koto Eko, despite the clear benefits of a sidestep, went in head first as usual to seek his trademark inside right, which would never suffice. Tobizaru, meanwhile, deployed none of the dance moves shown against Hakuho the previous day and lacked purpose throughout.
while lethargic veteran Okinomi sent his left hand into battle without any tactical finesse for backup. Day 10, not on video, brought a yet bigger gift. Hesitation by Chiyotairu, which meant he stood without charging and was promptly swept away. And while sumo chiefs and NHK pundits beat about the bush with their complaints, the fact was, Taidu knew the huge prize at stake for Teru, refused to be cast as villain, and bottled it. And while Mitake Umi on day 11 waxed lyrical over Teru's outside left, he charged in a way which aided its landing. But as he and we had grasped, it had to be this time. And every reserve of energy saved in the middle would be required by Teru for an exhausting home stretch, which tested his credentials to the limit. Plucky, tricky Meisei, kept apart from him in week one, unsettled with the ploy of strike and retreat, before a rush of blood upon glimpsing belt made his arms ripe for clamping. Then Shodai almost had him with a mighty scoop of great interest to the watching Hakuho, but lacked the pushing angle from the right to complete the job, and was driven away with a vice-like defensive left. And having seen him go 13-0 at this level for the first time, and with two losable fixtures remaining, his coach Isegahama, who also doubles as head of the judging division, felt impelled to step in. Justice, he effectively said, must be done now. Teru's 13 wins, allied to his two recent titles, were meriting of Yokozuna promotion there and then, he told reporters. It was no less than the man deserved, and it had to be this time. As it turned out, terrific Teru beat Nemesis Takayasu the next day in another hard match. His throat and armpits rocketed with those famed brawny arms. But crucial to his Yokozuna image, he overpowered the strongman with firmly planted legs, a hammering blow from the front, and a parry to rival Takayasu's own from the side. His power, skill and desire are not matters for debate. We all know the hell Hakuho put him through in the finale, a reminder that despite Sumo's collective will being behind him, this was an extremely hard-earned Yokozuna rise. Right on the nail was Teru's belief that most valued by the relevant committees was his effort. As coach Isegahama adds, he accepts his limits and works within them to the maximum extent that is humanly possible, taking all that he does right to the boundary. Rarely was that truer than July, when it had to be this time, and he justly ensured that it was.